Hey everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be talking about the difference between nephritic and nephrotic syndrome. So we have talked about nephrotic syndrome individually. I'll link it in the video description. We'll talk, we have talked about nephritic syndrome or glomerulonephritis individually. I'll link that in the video description as well. If you have not seen those and you're not familiar with them, I would recommend you watch those videos first as this is going to be kind of a, a bird's eye view of what really separates and doesn't separate these two conditions. So understanding them a little better using those videos or a different source I think will be helpful in terms of understanding this video. All right, so what we have here is a capillary within a glomerulus. It might look familiar compared to, you know, the other videos that we did. What we have here is the inside, the intravascular area, and we have a red blood cell, a white blood cell, fats, proteins, antithrombin-3, uh, antibodies, and then we have these blue finger-like projections called podocytes. In nephritic syndrome, the main injury is in the endothelial cells. So you get these gaps in the endothelial cells from immune deposi deposition and immune reaction to the endothelial cells. And then you'll get complement activation and that will recruit white blood cells. Whereas in nephrotic syndrome, the major injury is to the podocytes, the finger-like projections that wrap around this uh, capillary within the glomerulus. And that is often from a handful of different possible things, such as diabetes, lupus, autoimmune, viral, et cetera, et cetera. And if we think about it this way, it can help us kind of differentiate the two. More important than all of this, though, and kind of the biggest thing to remember, is that this is a spectrum. You can have aspects of both nephritic and nephrotic syndrome combined. And that's important to note as we kind of talk about what differentiates these two. So as we said, nephritic syndrome is more an injury to the endothelial lining, whereas nephrotic syndrome is more so an injury to the podocytes, the finger-like projections that wrap around the vessel. So as such, in nephrotic syndrome, you're going to primarily get protein that's leaking out, causing a severe proteinuria. And this severe proteinuria tends to be more than 3.5 grams per day, which also can equate to kind of a 3 plus or 4 plus protein comp uh, uh, component on your dipstick, but it's not as accurate as if you do a full 24 hour urine. In contrast to that, for nephritic syndrome, you will get proteinuria, right? Because you are getting some proteins that are going to be leaking out. But your proteinuria will typically not be as severe. So usually you'll have less than 3.5 grams per day. But this is where the spectrum comes in, right? This could be 1 gram, this could be 3 grams. You sometimes can get nephrotic range proteinuria with nephritic syndrome. So I'm going to star the things that are kind of um, um, especially within the spectrum, such as proteinuria. So you can get nephrotic range proteinuria in nephritic syndrome. All right, what else do we see? Well, in nephritic syndrome, the endothelial lining is injured. So these red blood cells will start to leak out and you will get hematuria. And usually that hematuria is significant. Whereas in nephrotic syndrome, your podocytes are the primary, primarily damaged. So you still have some endothelial, you know, junctions and you do not get as much red blood cells to leak out, but you can get very slight hematuria in nephrotic syndrome as well. And again, I'll star that because that's like a spectrum between nephritic and nephrotic syndrome. Okay, in nephrotic syndrome, you tend to get venous thrombo, uh, high risk for venous thromboembolism because your antithrombin-3 is leaking out and being excreted in the urine. So you have decreased antithrombin-3 levels. 
That can happen in nephritic syndrome, but it's more typical for nephrotic syndrome. In addition to that, in nephrotic syndrome, the severe proteinuria decreases your oncotic pressure in the blood vessels because the protein level is lower. Because of that, your liver starts to pump out more lipoproteins to try to increase that oncotic pressure. And you actually then start to get so many lipoproteins, you excrete them into your urine. And this can lead to fatty casts in the urine. All right. With the hematuria nephritic syndrome, you often will get red blood cell casts in the urine in nephritic syndrome. With the severe proteinuria nephrotic syndrome, you tend to get waxy casts, which are protein casts. All right. What else? Well, you will get edema in both, right? Edema is swelling of the interstitial tissues. And the reason you'll get edema in both is twofold. One, your oncotic pressure is decreased in both because you're excreting all this protein in the urine so that the fluid within the vascular space will flow out into the interstitium because you don't have enough oncotic pressure in the vessel. In addition to that, you're going to get dysregulation of your RAS system in both because of the glomerular injury, which is going to lead to retention of sodium in water, which increases the hydrostatic pressure within the vessel. So that's going to lead to edema in both. Hypertension, high blood pressure, is more typical of nephritic syndrome, especially for kind of the test question that you'll get hypertension in nephritic syndrome. But it's possible in nephrotic syndrome as well. Okay, what else? Well, in nephritic syndrome, it's an immune reaction, right, that is attacking the endothelial cells. Because of that, you get these white blood cells that are um, attracted to the area because of the immune reaction, and with endothelial injury, they will leak out into the interstitium as well. So you're going to get pyuria, uh, not the interstitium, into Bowman's capsule and into the nephron and excreted in the urine. Pyuria, which is white blood cells in the urine, which also will give you white blood cell casts, just like the red blood cell casts. You don't tend to get pyuria in nephrotic syndrome. Okay, other things. In nephrotic syndrome, you actually tend to leak out your antibodies and urinate them out. And because of that, in nephrotic syndrome, you actually tend to get an immunodeficiency that can increase your risk if deficiency, did I spell that right? Deficiency, uh, I don't know. That increases your risk for infection, especially pneumonias. That's more typical of nephrotic syndrome rather than nephritic syndrome. Okay, what else? Because of the hematuria in nephritic syndrome, you can get anemia or low blood counts if you have significant enough hematuria from your nephritic syndrome. You don't typically get anemia in nephrotic syndrome. All right. I don't think I said you get fatty casts in nephrotic syndrome and you also get hyperlipidemia because, again, that liver is pumping out lipoproteins into the bloodstream, some of which are excreted in the urine. That is more typical of nephrotic syndrome rather than nephritic syndrome. Both of these can lead to azotemia, which is an elevation of your BUN, and then you get your AKI with your decreased GFR. Um, but it's more kind of talked about in nephritic syndrome, but you can get azotemia in nephrotic syndrome as well, or that kidney injury. Um, you're injuring your glomerulus, right? And that's going to dysregulate the amount of blood flow through the glomerulus, can lead to afferent, ear, efferent arterial dysregulation, which can change the amount of blood flow to the kidney and cause a kidney injury. All right. And then lastly, kind of a smaller thing, for nephrotic syndrome, you also can tend to see hypocalcemia. And that is because you're losing so much albumin and albumin is negatively charged and is and 
calcium is positively charged, so the albumin carries the calcium. And without albumin, you will not have as much calcium because the homeostasis is dysregulated because you have less albumin carrying calcium. Okay, so those are the big differences between nephritic and nephrotic syndrome. I thought it might be helpful just lining them up next to each other. Um, let us know what questions, thoughts, comments you have down below. Feel free to check out our Patreon page, our Buy Us a Cup of Coffee page, and our YouTube memberships page. All of it's linked in the video description. Uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button to follow along, and we'll see you all next time. Stay well.